In your aquarium, you need a CO2 system. Why do then plants grow in nature without CO2? What is the difference? That's right, we are talking about CO2 systems. One question, for example, is can you do without them? Can you work without a CO2 system? Or does an aquarium really need to have a CO2 system? There are aquarists who do not have a CO2 system, and the aquarium still functions properly. So the question is, when do you need to have one? In order to answer this question, there are a few factors to consider that I would like to tell you about. There are different plants in different aquariums. Some need much more CO2 than others. The amount of CO2 needed by plants is not always the same, but differs greatly. Anyone who has Vallis neria in their aquarium will manage very well without a CO2 system. Someone else, reddish plants. Then these will always need a lot of CO2. They need a lot of light and a lot of fertilizer. The needs of the plants differ greatly. What do the plants actually do with the CO2? CO2, also called carbon dioxide, is the main source of food for plants. We have all learnt about this in school, and in most cases forgotten it again very quickly. Photosynthesis. In photosynthesis, plants do something unique. They combine water with the gas CO2, and using light energy, turn it into sugar. Into their food, therefore, their main food. In doing so, they create oxygen as a byproduct. This is how our planet works. Plants produce oxygen, and animal organisms, such as human beings, consume the oxygen. We breathe out CO2. The plants absorb the CO2. In the aquarium, though, we do not have thousands of fish. This means that we have less CO2 in the aquarium than the plants need. And it is in precisely this case that the CO2 system helps us. If we now connect a CO2 system and supply the plants with their main food, CO2, or carbon dioxide, why do we need fertilizer? Well, they are very different things. Let's compare it with our human food. Humans need carbohydrates, fats and proteins. This is equivalent to CO2 as the main food source for plants. But just carbohydrates, fats and proteins would not be enough for us humans. We also need vitamins, minerals and trace elements. Fertilizer comes into play in the same way for plants. One is just as necessary as the other. Just vitamins, minerals and trace elements would not be enough for humans either. Humans also need fats, carbohydrates and proteins. And likewise, plants also need a balanced diet. And this simply includes CO2. But back to the beginning. Some plants need much more CO2, fertilizer and light. Other plants, Vallisneria for example, need much less. This is why some aquariums function without a CO2 system. But as soon as we include more needy plants, we need a CO2 system. You will not see the plants shoot out of the tank the next day, but their rate of growth will increase tremendously. A CO2 system is really essential for optimum plant growth in an aquarium. If the other factors are also right, CO2 fertilization has a second benefit, which has nothing to do with the plants. It concerns the pH value. We know that many tropical fish, apart from in Lake Tanganyika and Lake Malawi, like a slightly acidic pH value, therefore below 7. With the help of CO2, you can control the pH value in the aquarium, at least downwards. This means that if you have a pH value of approximately 7.5 in your aquarium, you can reduce the pH value by adding CO2 to a value that is right for your fish and the hardness of the water, because the carbonate hardness plays an important role. We will talk about this later. The CO2 that you add to the aquarium here is partly used as carbon dioxide for the plants. But a small part of the CO2 reacts with the water to form carbonic acid, and every acid lowers the pH value. This means that by adding CO2, you can adjust the pH value to precisely the level needed by your fish and plants. 
And don't be afraid about installing a CO2 system. A lot of people are nervous. How am I going to put all of this together? It looks very complicated, but it isn't at all. You have a compressed gas cylinder and a pressure regulator, which you screw onto the bottles without using any tools. You connect a tube from the regulator to a non-return valve to prevent water from running into the regulator. Then attach a piece of tubing from the non-return valve to a diffuser that is placed within the aquarium. That's it. If you would like to turn it off at night, because plants do not need any CO2 at night, you can simply cut through the tubing before the non-return valve and attach a magnetic valve in between. Then you will have an automatic shut-off valve. If you want to control the pH value in your aquarium automatically, you can attach our pH control via the solenoid valve, and then enter the desired pH value required. It is really very, very simple. There is no need to be afraid about putting it all together. Use CO2 and you will see your plants grow fantastically, and the pH value will be just right.